and welcome to competency-based assessment in AC and example with Dr. Ken. This is the final 15 minute part, part four of four. And again, face-to-face -face delivery and assessment part B. So here again, we're going to look at how we do our face-to-face -face delivery in the purple circle and the theory assessment, tutorial exercises, skills, practices, etc. How all that then feeds into knowledge assessments and skills assessments, competency-based of course, but this time in the different sections, so I've called this part B. You may have noticed that um, in a lot of my videos, and I thought I might just introduce this at the last video here, my basic teaching philosophy is all the content from at least three directions and learning expectation lies with the student. So firstly, theory gets explained, discussed in interesting and memorable ways, often done with a quite colorful PowerPoint presentation small video clips, those kinds of things from the internet. Then theory applied using worked tutorial exercise examples. Then some hands-on practicals that demonstrate the physics that we're learning about that day very clearly. So there's your direct three ways of engaging the content. And then of course, homework is an expectation, which is then marked promptly every week. No use giving homework if you're not going to mark it promptly and get students their feedback every week, nice and quickly. So I hope you enjoy the final part of competency-based assessment in AC, an example. 15 minutes, again, this is part four of four, face-to-face -face delivery and assessment part B. I hope you again, you enjoy or have enjoyed the series. So now we come down to KA1 and 2 knowledge assessments in particular. So these two knowledge assessments are delivered online through Energy Space. The students are expected to bring their own devices to do the assessment, either a computer or a tablet, but not a phone. They're not allowed to use a phone to access this. Too easy to do cheating and subversive things with your phone, so no phone. The questions database is extensive within the topics and within each question. So the energy space system shuffles questions in order in the topic and questions within itself. The database is typically five questions deep for every question asked. So the auto marking feature saves the teacher, me, a lot of time. The teacher can also override the marking system. I often do this as a check mark, the assessment with individual students as we go. The assessment is three hours, open book and open internet. Yes, open internet, but not the front end of energy space. As I explained to many of my students, if you have to open the internet to find an answer, you won't know what the right answer is when it even pops up in front of you. So even though you can use the internet, 99.9% .9 chance you'll waste more time than you'll ever gain. I allow a four hour window for the assessments. Many students complete the assessment within two hours, then giving me two hours to complete the marking as each student finishes. So as a student finishes, they simply sit beside me, I bring up their finished assessment and we go through it together looking at um, how they performed. Because the assessment is online and we don't have to provide a, or we can't provide a hard copy to review. So to provide assessment feedback, I've developed a form that I complete as a student and I go through the assessment attempt together and I'll show you that shortly. So here's 
some typical questions. I've just um, cut and paste this straight out of energy space and you can see here um, 13 some trigonometry you can see the students put the answer in at 12 um, meters and it's been graded as correct um, a question about magnitude a question about uh, how to read an oscilloscope screen here and Again, some more trigonometry, some more stuff around single phase waveforms. And you can see on each, each occasion, uh, this particular student has um, been marked correct. So that's what the assessment looks like when it comes back for the student and I to sit down and go through. I can, of course, override any of those marks, either make them wrong if I think he doesn't actually understand or she and if there's a calc problem in there within 0.01 or they just forgot to round to three significant figures or whatever I can override a red back to a green etc etc so here's the feedback form so the great thing about the feedback form is we simply put the student's name here the number we look at the first uh, topic that we're assessing together as we're sitting beside each other and uh, we assess three things we assess their general knowledge how they did in the calcs and their understanding of the physics and I put here a like it scale so if their general knowledge was good they'll get across up here but if their calcs were poor and I think their understanding of the physics was also poor, it will look like this. If they got um, two questions, or so let's say they got uh, three questions were in error, then I would simply circle this to say not yet satisfactory, and they will need to do a reset on that topic. But say coming down here to topic two, phase of diagrams and maths, they might have done actually quite well, got nothing wrong, so I simply circle the S to say they've been successful in that topic. And we simply work our way through the form for the assessment. So this is obviously Knowledge Assessment 1, topics 1 to 7, lessons 1 to 6. And we check that off together, and once that's done, I photocopy it, they take a copy, I keep a copy, and we all understand what has to be done, whether there's another assessment they've got to reset, etc. So that gives you some idea of how my feedback form works for online assessment. Um, the KA Knowledge Assessment, again, it's competency-based assessment process using energy space and supplementary evidence. For knowledge assessments, the supplementary evidence is the tutorial exercise book. And I've mentioned that several times now. To use the relevant section, it must be fully complete and fully correct. So this is kind of the process. If all the questions in a topic from energy space are correct, after a general review, a review that is, you know, making sure these rounding errors are fixed, that kind of stuff, then the topic is assessed as successful, and I circle the S for the topic. If there is still one question wrong in a topic, I ask for the supplementary evidence. If this is 100% complete and correct in the relevant section of the tutorial exercises, then it's all good. I'll then use that as assessing successful based on the supplementary evidence. If there are two or more wrong answers, then the students simply must do a reset of the entire topic. Four, the process is then repeated for a reset of the relevant topic or topics. If a student is not yet successful in any topic twice, then they are required to re-enroll in the entire unit. So now we're down to the skills assessment. So let's leave the knowledge assessments behind for a bit. This is now the skills assessments. The five skills assessments in AC are again sourced from energy space. They're just PDF documents we can download. Combined with our standard CIT cover pages, these I get printed up into a booklet form. And the assessment again 
is open textbook only. So each skills assessment is allotted a time to be completed in. Each skills assessment has a multiple checkpoint by the assessor. So one assessment might require me to check at two or three points through the assessment. If the assessment is completed correctly in the allotted time, this is assessed as successful. If the student can't continue, doesn't know the answer or runs out of time, each question has a supplementary amount of time, normally 15 minutes. They may reset the task immediately after a little bit of direction and use that 15 minutes or at a later time, again, using that supplementary 15 minutes. But they don't get both. They either reset there with their 15 minutes or they reset later or finish off later, I should say, with the 15 minutes. If the skills assessment has been completed within the allotted time and there is still just one error, then the supplementary evidence comes into play. In this case, supplementary evidence is the skills workbook that is completed each week in class. And again, the relevant skills practice must have been completed to 100% and be 100% correct. So very similar principle to the knowledge assessments now applied to the skills assessments. So here's a picture of a typical skills assessment or just part of, and you can see here, they've actually got to set up a series circuit with resistors connected to an AC supply. They've got to measure the supply voltage and they measure the voltage across one of the resistors. And then there's some tables on the next page they need to fill out. So the skills assessments, again, are nicely formed up into a booklet that we print out for them. The first assessment student uses the booklet. They put their details into the assessment front cover pages, etc. Then the booklet is retained by the teacher or the assessor between assessment events. The book is then given back at the next assessment event or at the reset point, all those kinds of things. But the book stays in the possession of the teacher assessor. So that brings us to the end. So summing up what uh, Dr. Ken does in UEE NEEG 102A is this holistic picture of what I'm doing. So in, the, in this box, this big box, and you can see labeled kind of floating around in the box are the big things that kind of sit in the background. So I've got the DC drawings and electromag diagnostic assessment so students know where they're at before they start. I set up entry level expectations. We go through learning techniques and study techniques with the three ways to do AC. I introduce them to learning how to learn and I've set up a special website called wiredforimagination.com, which has um, is totally free and gives students lots and lots of cognitive tools. I've actually got um, 16 cognitive tools. Then at the heart, we have the unit of AC itself. And then we have four major pillars that I use to deliver and assess AC. I have the knowledge assessment KA3 up out front forced study. We have the class lessons face to face with AC theory presented by me, skills practices that they do and of course, starting on their tutorial exercises. And as time progresses, we get to the knowledge assessments and the skills assessments. Underpinning all of this, we have the eLearn videos, we have the textbook, and we have energy space with a couple of caveats to make sure students understand what's going on.
And again, sitting in the background, we have Electrical Principles Textbook, a subject study guide, leaving no wriggle room, no space to say, I didn't know when something was due, I didn't know how to study, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, just is taken completely out of the equation. So that sums up the holistic approach of how I do competency-based delivery and competency-based assessment. Of course, it's not really competency-based delivery, it's just delivery with competency-based assessment. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing and understanding a little bit about how competency-based assessment works in AC. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and I hope you got something out of a segment on competency-based assessment in AC with Dr. Ken. All the best. Bye.